Hello everyone, this is Seema Sani. I hope you all are good. Today we will discuss most important questions for class 12 board exams. Now, board exam ke liye bahut hi kam time reh gaya hai. Agar aap in questions ko bhi kar lete ho, tab bhi aap bahut hi achhe marks gain kar sakte ho. So, aaj hum discuss karenge Flamingo book ke most important questions, jo ki board exam mein puche jate. So, stay with me till the end. Let's start. So, let's start with chapter one, the last lesson. Question number one: What was French expected to be prepared with for school that day? Answer. The teacher had said that he would ask questions on participles. So, French was expected to be prepared with rules for the use of participles. But poor French didn't know a word of them. Question number two. What did French notice that was unusual about the school that day? Answer. There were usually lots of noises when the school began. For example, there was the opening and closing of desks. The sounds of teacher's great ruler rapping on the table could be heard. But that day, it was all very quiet. It was as quiet as Sunday morning. Question number three: What had been put up on the bulletin board? Answer: It was an order from Berlin. It said that only German would be taught in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine. The new teachers were coming the next day. Question number four: What changes did the order from Berlin cause in school that day? Answer: It was all quiet. There were no noises. It was as quiet as Sunday morning. Mr. Hamill said it would be his last lesson. Everybody looked sad. The village people had come to thank Mr. Hamill for his 40 years of faithful service. Question number five: How did French feeling about Mr. Hamill and his school change? Answer: French was shocked when he heard that Mr. Hamill was leaving the school forever. His feelings now changed altogether. He cursed himself for not learning his lessons. He forgot. All about Mr. Hamel's ruler and his cranky nature. Now, long question, long question, six or eight marks ka aasakta hai. Question: The people in the story, the last lesson, suddenly realize how precious their language is to them. What shows you this? Why does this happen? Answer: Orders had come from Berlin to teach only German in the schools of Alges and Lorin. So, Mr. Hamel, the French teacher, has to leave the school. When the old men of the village come to know that. Mr. Hamel is leaving the school forever. They come to thank him for his 40 years of faithful service. Everyone is very sad at his leaving the school. Mr. Hamel tells his students and villagers that French is the clearest and the most logical language. He calls it the most beautiful language in the world. He warns his people to keep it alive and never forget it. He says when people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they have the key to their prison. He makes them feel that the Germans can enslave them, the French people, but they can't take away their love for their French language. It is in their blood and cannot be finished as long as they are alive. All this makes the people suddenly realize how precious their language is to them. Chapter 2 Lost Spring, written by Anish Jung. Question number 1 What is Sahib looking for in the garbage dumps? Where is he and where has he come from? Answer, Sahib is a poor rag picker. Every morning, he comes to probe the garbage heaps in the author's neighborhood. He looks for anything that can get him some coins. His family has migrated from Dhaka. Now they are living in the Simapuri area of Delhi. Question number two, what explanations does the author give for the children not wearing footwear? Answer, the rag pickers were poor children. They always went about barefoot. They had become used to it even if they had shoes. They looked for excuses not to wear them. Some even said that going barefoot was tradition among them. Question number three. Was Sahib happy working at the tea stall? Explain. Answer. Sahib did not feel happy there. He had lost his carefree look. He was paid 800 rupees and given all his meals. But he was no longer his own master. He belonged to the man who owned the tea stall. Question number four. What makes the city of Firozabad famous? Answer. Firozabad is famous for its bangles. Every other family here is engaged in making bangles. It is the center of India's glass blowing industry. It makes bangles for all the women of the land. Question number five. Mention the hazards of working in the glass bangles industry. Answer. Workers in the glass bangles industry have to work in very high temperatures. They work in dingy cells without air and light. They don't get any daylight. Thus, they lose the brightness of their eyes. 
the powder from the polishing of bangles also blinds them question number 6 what forces conspire to keep the workers in bengal industry of firozabad in poverty answer there are saukars middlemen policemen bureaucrats and politicians all these form a vicious circle poor bengal makers have been trapped in it for generations now they have come to accept it as something natural now long questions question number 1 Mention the hazards of working in the glass bangles industry. Answer: The poor bangle makers lead a miserable life. These people have always been poor. They have to work in glass bangles industry to earn their living. They have to weld glass while making the bangles, and for this they have to work in high temperatures. They have to work in dingy cells without air and light. They don't get any daylight. Thus, they lose the brightness of their eyes. Their eyes get more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside. About twenty thousand children have to work in such dark places all day long. So many of them lose their eyesight even before they become adults. The Bengal makers know nothing except bangles. Every other family in Firozabad, a city of bangles, is engaged in making bangles. For generations, families in Firozabad have been working around. glass furnaces in dingy cells their life is worse than hell now chapter number 3 deep water by william douglas question number 1 why was douglas determined to get over his fear of water answer douglas visited many famous water spots in his country but whenever he wanted to put his foot into them the old fears would come to his mind it spoiled all his joys of fishing boating and swimming that was why he was determined to get over his fear of water question number 2 What was the misadventure at the YMCA pool that the writer William Douglas speaks about? Answer: The misadventure referred to happened at the YMCA swimming pool. The writer had joined the pool to learn to swim. One day, he was sitting alone on the side of the pool. There was no one there. He was afraid of going into the water alone. So he was waiting for others to come. Suddenly, a big boy came in. He picked the writer up and tossed him into the pool the writer was frightened but not much he at once went to the bottom of the pool on the way down he made a plan he would hit the bottom and make a big jump to the surface but he came up very slowly he could see nothing but water he grew panicky twice he tried to jump but the jump made no difference at last he stopped all efforts he relaxed there was no more panic everything blanked out the curtain of life fell but luckily before he was dead he was taken out of the pool and saved question number 3 how did the instructor build a swimmer out of douglas answer the instructor was a very experienced and patient person he used a novel method to train the writer in swimming he put a belt round the writer a rope was attached to the belt it went through a pulley the pulley ran on an overhead cable the instructor held on to the end of the rope the writer went back and forth across the pool he practiced for many weeks the tension began to grow less then the instructor taught him to exhale under water and inhale above water the writer repeated this exercise hundreds of times but by bit he lost some of his old fear next the instructor taught him to kick with his legs thus piece by piece the instructor built out the writer a swimmer then he integrated all the pieces nicely and at last he said now you can swim dive off and swim the length of the pool the writer was able to do it question number 4 how did douglas overcome his fear of water answer after getting his training from the instructor douglas still had some old fears he feared that his terror would come back to him when he would be alone in the water so he tried himself once again he dived into the pool and swam the length up and down little memories of the old terror came to him but he drove all fear out of his mind this went on for 4 months but he was still not satisfied he was not sure all his fear had left so he went to lake wentworth in new hampshire he swam 2 miles across the lake the old fear returned a little but soon all fear fled and he swam in on another occasion he went and camped by the side of the warm lake the next morning he dived into the lake he swam across to the other shore and back he shouted with joy he had conquered his fear of water next question 
how does Douglas describe the panic that greeted him as he was almost drowned? What makes the description so vivid? Answer: Douglas noted each of his feelings and emotions while he was struggling underwater, and he has reproduced them very vividly. When he was thrown into the pool, he went at once to the bottom of the pool. He says that he was frightened, but not much. On his way down, he made a plan. He would hit the bottom and make a big jump to the surface. But the jump made no difference. He came up very slowly. He grew panicky. He was suffocating. He tried to cry, but no sound came. He tried to bring his legs up, but a great force was pulling him under. He had started his journey back to the bottom. Complete terror seized him. He was crying under water. He was stiff with fear. He felt the tides under him. He jumped with all his might, but again it made no difference. He started down a third time. Now he stopped all efforts. He relaxed. There was no more panic. He was feeling nice. Everything blanked out. The curtain of life fell. But luckily, before he was dead, he was taken out of the pool and saved. Next question: Narrate briefly the writer's emotions and fears when he was thrown into the pool. What plans did he make to come to the surface? Answer: At first, the writer was frightened, but not much. On the way down, he made a plan. He would hit the bottom and make a big jump to the surface. But the jump made no difference. He came up very slowly. He grew panicky. He was suffocating. He tried to cry, but no sound came. He tried to bring his legs up, but a great force was pulling him under. He had started his journey back to the bottom. Complete terror seized him. He was crying under water. He was stiff with fear. He felt the tides under him. He jumped with all his might, but again it made no difference. He started down a third time. Now he stopped all efforts. He relaxed. There was no more panic. He was feeling nice. Everything blanked out. The curtain of life fell. But luckily, before he was dead, he was taken out of the pool and saved. Chapter number four: The Rat Trap by Selma Lagerlöf. Question number one: How did the peddler like his idea of the world being a rat trap, and why? Answer: The peddler liked his idea very much. The world had never been very kind to him, so it gave him a great joy to think ill of it. It became a pastime with him to think of the world as a rat trap. Question number two: Why was the crocodile so talkative and friendly with the peddler? Answer: The crocodile was a lonely person. He was without wife and child. He was happy to have someone in his loneliness. He was happy that he had someone to talk to. That was why he was so talkative and friendly with the peddler. Question number three: Did the peddler expect the kind of hospitality that he received from the crocodile? Answer: The peddler was often not welcomed anywhere. He was always chased away. It was only sour looks that greeted him, but the old crocodile showed him unusual generosity. It was something unexpected for the peddler. Question number four: From where did the peddler get the idea of the world being a rat trap? Answer. While plodding his way, the man kept thinking of his rat traps. Suddenly, one day an idea came to him. He thought the whole world was also like a big rat trap. Some had already been caught in the snare, and the others were still circling round the bait. Question number five: What made the peddler think that he had indeed fallen into a rat trap? Answer: In order to escape being caught, the peddler had walked into a confusing forest. But now he could find no way out. He walked and walked. And was tired to death. At once, the thought of the world being a rat trap came to his mind. He thought that now his own turn had come. Now, long question: How does the peddler interpret the acts of kindness and hospitality shown by the crocodile, the iron master, and his daughter? Answer: The peddler enjoys the crocodile's kindness and hospitality, but he knows that the crocodile is being friendly with him to overcome his own loneliness. The crocodile also seems to be a little arrogant. He speaks proudly of his bossy. He even proudly displays the thirty kroner he has got as payment of the cow's milk. Thus, he in a way tempts the peddler to steal away his money. The iron master takes the peddler for an old regimental acquaintance. Seeing his miserable condition, he wants to take him home. He also wants to help him out of his misery. But when he realizes his mistake, he at once orders him to get out of his house. However. He gives in when his daughter pleads for the poor hungry man. The iron master's daughter is the only person who shows real sympathy for the peddler. She serves him for no selfish reason. 
Her only motive is to make a poor hungry man feel at home on Christmas Eve. Question number seven: When did the Iron Master realize his mistake? Answer: The Iron Master looked at the peddler in the broad light of the morning. Now he had been washed, his hair was cut, and he had been shaved. He was also well dressed. Now the Iron Master could clearly see that the tramp was none of his old acquaintances. Thus he realized his mistake. Chapter number five: Indigo. Question number one. Why has Rajkumar Shukla been described as being resolute? Answer: Rajkumar Shukla wanted Gandhi ji to accompany him to Champaran. He wanted him to see the injustice done to the poor peasants. Gandhi ji was too busy at that time and had several engagements. But Shukla never left Gandhi ji's side. He followed him wherever he went. At last, Gandhi ji had to find time to go with him. It shows how resolute Shukla was. Question number two: Why did Gandhi ji agree to a settlement of 25% refund to the farmers? Answer: The British planters wanted some excuse to prolong the dispute with the peasants, but Gandhi ji proved too wise for them. He at once ended the deadlock by accepting what the planters wanted. The British had to surrender part of the money and also their prestige. Question number three: How did the episode of the refund of compensation change the plight of the peasants? Answer: The peasants now gained courage. They saw that they had rights and they had also defenders of their rights. By and by, the British planters left their estates. These estates came back to the peasants. Indigo sharecropping disappeared forever. Now, long questions: Why do you think Gandhi ji considered the Champaran episode to be turning point in his life? Answer: Champaran was a new experience for Gandhi ji. Here, he came to understand the common Indian people and the British rulers in a better manner. He saw that the common Indian could be taught to be brave. They had the courage to fight for their rights. They followed him faithfully. They understood him well. The Champaran episode also broke the myth of the dreadful British power. Gandhi ji was ordered first to leave Tirhat, but he refused. Again, he got the notice to leave Champaran immediately. Gandhi ji received the notice but wrote on it that he would disobey the order. At the court, he gave sound reasons for it. He said that. He was no lawbreaker, but he had to do his moral duty to his people. Thousands of people rallied in support of Gandhi ji. The government was confused. At last, the case against Gandhi ji had to be dropped. Thus, Gandhi ji found that the British could not order him about in his own country. The myth of their dreadful power was broken. Next question: How do we know that ordinary people too contributed to the freedom movement? Answer the question in reference to the lesson indigo in about 100 to 125 words. Answer: The Champaran episode amply proves that it was in fact the ordinary people who shook the foundations of the British rule in India. They contributed a lot to the success of the freedom movement. The story of Champaran started with the poor, helpless peasants named Raj Kumar, and it ended with forcing the British rulers to bow to the just demands of the poor indigo planters. They proved for the first time that the British could be subdued through a determined struggle and unfailing courage. The common people now gained courage. They saw that they had rights and could defend those rights by standing united. The British were for them no more terror. They gained courage to stand up and protest against the injustice done by them. They made the rulers weaker and weaker with every struggle for their rights, and at last. Forced by common people, the British had to leave the country. Chapter number six: Poets and Pancakes by Asoka Mitra. Question number one: What work did the office boy do in the Gemini Studios? Why did he join the studios? Why was he disappointed? Answer: The makeup of the crowd players was the responsibility of the office boy. He had joined the studios with the aim of becoming a star actor, a director, a top screen writer, or a lyric writer. He was disappointed because he could become nothing but an office boy. Question number two: Why did the author appear to be doing nothing at the studios? Answer: The author's office was in a small room. He was seen all day taking cuttings from the newspapers. He used to store these clippings in files. Those who saw him thought that he did almost nothing all day. Question number three: Why was the office boy frustrated? Who did he show his anger on? Answer. The office boy had desired to become a star actor, a director, a top screen writer, or a lyric writer, but he could become nothing but a simple makeup man. He was called the office boy, though he was around forty. That was why he was frustrated. He showed his anger on Subbu, 
who was the number 2 at Gemini Studio. Question number 4. Subbu is described as many-sided genius. List 4 of his special abilities. Answer. Subbu had the ability to look cheerful at all times. He was very loyal to the boss. He was tailor-made for films and was a very talented actor. He could write very good poetry, but generally he chose to address his poetry to the masses. Question number 5. Why was the Moral Rearmament Army welcomed at the studios? Answer. These people were thought to be a group of international circus. They were about 200 strong. Entertaining them afforded the Gemini staff a good diversion from their dull routine. They were also gifted stage players. Next question. Did the people at Gemini Studios have any particular political affiliations? Answer. Most of the people at the studios wore Khadi. They worshipped Gandhiji. But beyond that, they had no understanding of any political thought. However, they were terribly averse to the term communism. Next question. What is the example of national integration that the author refers in the makeup department? Answer. The makeup department had a large team of workers. They were all from different parts of India and belonged to different castes. The department was headed by Maharashtrian. His assistant included Kanadiga, an Andrit, an Indian Christian, an Anglo-Burmese and the local Tamils. This is what the writer calls national integration. Now long question, why was Kot Mangalam Subu considered number 2 in Germany Studios? Answer, Subu was the number 2 at Germany Studios. He had the ability to look cheerful at all times. He could never do things of his own, but he was very loyal to the boss. During the golden years of the Germany Studios, Subu had his hand in every important affairs of the company. He had a separate identity as a poet. He could certainly write in more complex and higher forms, but he deliberately chose to write for the masses. He composed several truly original story poems in folk diction. He also wrote a novel with deftly creative characters. He was an amazing actor. He never aspired to the lead roles, but whatever role he played, he performed better than the main players. He was tailor-made for films. Subu had a genuine love for anyone he met. His house was a permanent residence for dozens of relations and acquaintances. He was truly a nice character, yet he had his enemies. Chapter number 7, Interview Question number 1, Why do most celebrity writers despise being interviewed? Answer, most celebrities despise the interview as an unwelcome intrusion into their lives. Some even feel wounded by them. They have a horror of the interviewer. Kipling regarded interviewing as immoral. He called it a crime which merits punishment. Question number two, what is the reason of the huge success of the novel, The Name of the Rose? Answer, the writer calls the huge success of the novel a mystery. However, the novel became popular because it gave the reader a deep and interesting reading. It was a detective story interwoven with metaphysics, ethics and medieval history. Its selling about 10 to 15 million copies was not just an accident. Chapter number 8, Going Places by A.R. Barton. Question number 1, Why did Sophie wriggle when Jeff told their father that she had met Danny Casey? Answer, Sophie had great fear of her father. She knew he didn't like her mixing with outsiders. When Jeff told about her meeting with Danny, the father was very angry. He looked at Sophie in disdain. It was her fear that made Sophie wriggle. Question number 2, How does Sophie include her brother Jeff? In her fantasy, in her future. Answer, Sophie is an ambitious and outgoing girl. In her fantasy, she imagines herself riding behind her brother on his bike. He is wearing new shining leathers. She is wearing a yellow dress. Her cape is flying out behind. She even imagines people rising to greet them and applauding. Question number three, why didn't Sophie want Jancy to know about her story with Danny? Answer, Sophie feared that if Jancy knew the story, she would tell the whole neighborhood. Then thousands of people would flock to her house. They would ask what the thing was all about. And when her father saw all this, he would be very angry. He could even murder her, she thought. Question number four, which was the only occasion when Sophie got to see Danny Casey in person? Answer, United was playing a match on Saturday. Sophie with her father and brothers went to see the match. Sophie sat near the goal. She saw how Danny scored a brilliant goal for his team. It was the only occasion when she saw him in person. Question number 5. Sophie and Jancy were classmates and friends. 
What were the differences between them that show up in the story? Answer: Jency was a down-to-earth girl. She had no false dreams. She knew her limitations and those of Sophie also. But Sophie was an ambitious girl. She lived in a world of dreams. She had plans that could never come true. Question number six: What were the options that Sophie was dreaming of? Why did Jency discourage her from having such dreams? Answer: She was dreaming of buying a boutique. She also dreamed to be an actress or a fashion designer. She dreamed that she could be a manager to begin with. But Jency had her feet on the ground. She knew Sophie belonged to a poor family, and all her plans were nothing but imaginary dreams. Next question: How would you describe the character and temperament of Sophie's father? Answer: Sophie's father seems to be a careless and carefree person. He seems to belong to the labor class. He has only an old bicycle, but he often goes to the pub to enjoy himself. He is fond of watching football matches also. He does not worry much about his children. His manner of eating the pie also shows that he has rough eating manners. However, he understands well the nature of the daughter Sophie. He knows that she makes up wild stories to impress others. When he is told that Sophie has met Danny Casey, He looks at her in disdain. He ignores her completely and continues watching the television. But when Sophie insists with story of Danny, he loses his temper. He says, "This another of your wild stories. One of these days you are going to talk yourself into a load of trouble." And we know that the old man's estimate proves quite true in the end. Next question: Sophie and Jency were classmates and friends. What were the differences between them that show up in the story? Answer. Sophie and Jency are classmates and friends but they are poles apart in their characters and temperament both of them belong to poor families but Sophie is very ambitious she has no source of any money but she plans to have the finest boutique in the city Jency reminds her that it will take her long time to save that much money at this Sophie says she will become a manager to begin with but she has no idea who will make her a manager state of On the other hand, Jency is a very practical girl. She has her feet on the ground. She has no false ambitions. She is a straightforward girl. When Sophie tells her about her meeting with Danny Casey, she at once says, "You never did." However, she is a true friend. Sophie says that her meeting with Danny was meant to be a secret. At this, Jency says, "You can trust me, Sophie. You know that." Next question: Sophie's dreams and disappointments are all in her mind. Discuss. Answer: Sophie is a young girl. She is yet at school. She belongs to a poor family, but she forgets the real facts of her life. She is very ambitious from the very beginning. She has no money yet thinks of buying a nice boutique after her school. She also plans to become an actress or a fashion designer. All such dreams are in Sophie's mind only. There is no chance of their ever becoming a reality. So it is the story of her disappointment in Danny Casey. She takes a chance meeting with him as the culmination of their romance. She keeps waiting for him when she knows that there is no possibility of his coming. That's all for today. Our next video will be most important questions from class 12th with Taj book. So don't forget to watch it. For more videos, please subscribe my channel. Okay then, bye. See you tomorrow with another video.